Today on Firebird Nation Sports Update, we'll check in with Washington, D.C.'s hottest basketball teams, the University of the District of Columbia Firebirds. We'll review the basketball season thus far as both teams get ready for postseason play, and we'll talk with head coaches Jeff Ruland and Jay Butler. We'll also get a student athlete's perspective in the Firebirds spotlight as we chat with women's basketball senior captain and point guard Jasmine Rich. Lastly, we'll stop in at the inaugural University of the District of Columbia Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony as UDC honors the greatest student athletes, coaches, and administrators in the long history of athletics at the university. Hello, this is Firebird Nation Sports Update, and I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. Firebird Nation Sports Update is your one-stop shop for all things UDC athletics. Flap your wings and get ready to soar because the Firebird is rising in the nation's capital. The buzz is building around campus and in the Washington, D.C. area. The Firebirds are back and people are taking notice. Both the men's and women's basketball teams cracked the 20 win barrier, and in the same week, both teams found themselves ranked in the top 25 in the country, marking the first time both teams were in the top 25 national polls at the same time. As a regular season comes to a close, the men's team sits at 22 and three, and the women's team is 21 and four. On February 18th, the men's basketball team avenged a loss earlier in the season to conference foe Bridgeport with an 89 to 66 win. The Firebirds sit at 13 and two in East Coast Conference play and they're currently ranked second in the conference behind only CW Post out of Long Island. The Firebird men continue to be paced by senior guards Nigel Munson out of DeMatha High School and Brandon Herbert from the McDonough School in Baltimore. Both players average 20 points per game and Munson averages over six assists, which ranks ninth nationally. Center Dyreek Jones ranks third in the country in blocks with over three per game. On the women's side, the Firebirds have won 10 of their last 11, and they've only lost one home game all year. The trademark of Firebirds women's basketball is a balanced offensive effort and a tireless full court press. Senior guard Lauren Brittingham has emerged as a leading scorer, averaging over 13 points per game. With a 12 and two conference record, the Firebird women are tied for first place in the East Coast Conference with Dowling College. With the ECC tournament right around the corner, both the men and women hope to finish strong and lock up the top spot in the conference. The ECC basketball championships will be held at Queens College on March 3rd and 4th. For more information on Firebird basketball, visit the web at udcfirebirds.com. The University of the District of Columbia has a long and rich history of athletics, spanning its 160-year existence. The University of the District of Columbia Department of Athletics honored the past as they continue to build for the future at the inaugural Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony on Friday, February 17th. The event included a reception, dinner, and induction ceremony. Close to 200 people filled the room and enjoyed the inaugural event. The Master of Ceremony was James Butch McAdams, University of the District of Columbia, Class of 1981. The evening featured speeches from several key members of the senior staff of the Athletic Department, as well as the president of the university, Alan Sessoms. Each inductee, or a representative of the inductee for those who were inducted posthumously, were presented with a Hall of Fame medal, and they were given the opportunity to address the crowd. They were also represented in a slideshow. The names of the inaugural inductees into the Athletics Hall of Fame will forever be etched in the history of the University of the District of Columbia. Reslin W. Henley was a basketball and football student athlete and a coach at Minor Teachers College in the late 1930s. The Reslin Woodruff Henley Award has been awarded to student athletes from Minor Teachers College, District of Columbia Teachers College, and the University of the District of Columbia since 1953. 
Leonard Tony Upson was an exceptional basketball student athlete at the District of Columbia Teachers College in the 1960s. Upson was named team MVP four years in a row and was named Maryland Collegiate Conference MVP three times. Dr. Philip Sheridan Fox was an administrator, coach, and an official at Wilson Teachers College. Fox was a trailblazer in collegiate basketball officiating, and his influence has been felt for years in the region and nationally. Elizabeth Young McNair was a track and field student athlete at the University of the District of Columbia in the late 1970s. McNair was the University of the District of Columbia's first women's track and field All-American. William S. Jones was the head men's basketball coach at the University of the District of Columbia from 1979 to 1999, and he left as the all-time winningest basketball coach in the University of the District of Columbia history. The 1982 University of the District of Columbia men's basketball NCAA Division II National Championship team was the first basketball team to bring a national championship home to Washington, D.C., and they were led by All-Americans Michael Britt and Earl Jones. They finished the season with a 25-5 record. For more information on the inaugural Athletics Hall of Fame, visit udcfirebirds.com backslash athletic hall of fame. Coming up next, head women's basketball coach Jay Butler. I'm here with University of the District of Columbia women's head basketball coach Jay Butler. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Matt. Coach, your team sits at 21 and four. You're ranked number 23 in the country. Did you envision you'd have this kind of year? Uh, not at the start of the season. Uh, I knew we had seven seniors, so I knew we had the leadership, but I just thought it would take a little bit of time to gel. Uh, we had a transfer come in uh, with one year to play in Lauren Brittingham. So I thought it'd take a little time just to get the chemistry down. But the young ladies, they played well early on. We got out and got to a, a seven game win streak and then we ended up dropping our first conference game. And then uh, we actually picked it up uh, second semester. And then also when we lost uh, Jamila Bonner to the ACL injury, uh, to be sitting here at 21 wins uh, is, is pretty big. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And, and we're gonna be joined in a little bit later uh, by Jasmine Rich, your point guard. Uh, senior captain. Uh, what has Jasmine meant to the program? Ah, Jasmine's been a, a big part of this program for four years. Uh, she's a four-year player. Uh, she's grown as a player. She came in as a combo guard and we asked her to, you know, to come in and primarily play the one position and she's done a great job. Last year she was number 13 in the country in assists and uh, this year, you know, she's she's had some help with Lauren Brittenham at the one spot, but she's still ranked up there in the ECC uh, as the top assist uh, player. And right now, down the stretch, we're going to need our leadership and our strong point guard play to get us that ECC championship. And, and you mentioned Jamila Bonner, who you lost uh, to ACL injury, and she's out for the year. She's the leading scorer and one of the leading scorers in the country. Lauren Brittingham, who you also mentioned, has kind of stepped up and is one of the, your leading scorer now and, and kind of your go-to person on offense in terms of scoring. Yeah. Um, how has that happened? Uh, we always knew that Lauren could play, and then I just wanted to bring her along slowly. So at the start of the season, uh, we was bringing her off as the sixth, the sixth player coming off, and uh, we knew she can give us that scoring coming off the bench. But when we actually had to put her in the starting lineup with uh, Bonner's injury, ACL for the year, uh, we asked her just to come in and um, got to get us going early. And we always knew that she could play well, and um, she's a, she's a good scorer. She's a true point guard. She can distribute. She can get to the basket. She can shoot the three. She can basically do it all. Yeah, she's fun to watch. That's yeah, for sure. she's exciting. Uh, right now, you're battling for the top spot in the East yeah. Coast Conference. What does the ECC tournament look like? Uh, right now, it's look like uh, Dallin and uh, Dallin's going to probably finish tied with us, but they probably get the nod because of the head to head. They beat us twice this year, so they probably finish with in first place, and we'll get the. Uh, the all, we'll get the automatic buy because we'll end up finishing second. But right now, uh, we're looking at possibly playing against St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, Malloy matchup. So right now, we're just trying to focus on playing against uh, CW Post on Saturday, which is going to be a tough NCAA region game for us. But you get that buy into the semifinals of the league tournament, which is a great thing. Oh, yes, it's huge. Yeah. It's, you know, you get an opportunity, and now you can sit back and uh, wait on to see who you're going to play against. 
and to get that bye and you, you go straight to New York and play in the semifinals, it's, it's big for us right now. That's going to be fun going up to New York to play in a conference tournament. Wow, it's big. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you're looking forward to that. Uh, we're excited. You know, we've been independent for so long and it had the opportunity to play in a conference championship and, you know, ultimately to get an automatic bid into the NCAA. Right now we're sitting at number five in the region, so if the season were to end today, we'll be in the NCAA. So right now, you know, the young ladies are excited, the coaching staff excited, and we just feel real good going into the tournament. You mentioned the magic words, the NCAA tournament. So you think your chances are good if all goes well? Yeah, we definitely got to take care of this weekend against CW Post and um, got to do well in the tournament. But right now we're sitting at five in the region. They take the top eight teams. So right now we're in a good place and hopefully we can keep it going. Now the, now the men's team is ranked uh, 18th. They're in the top 25 as well. How cool is that that both your teams are in the top 25 at the same time? Oh, it's great. You know, I think we go on the line and we look. Uh, a lot of times we're on the road uh, headed to New York, and then we try to get on our phones and check to see, you know, where the men's ranked and see where we're ranked. So it's a good thing right now. Uh, the guys and the girls that get along well. The Coach Ruben, he's a fun guy. We talk all the time. And it's, it's not a competitive thing. It's just a situation where both of us are doing well. And we, I think we, on the road, we all stick together. Because uh, when we're on the road, we pretty much by ourselves. So we kind of stick together and root for each other. Yeah, you mentioned on the road and going to New York. For the viewers that don't know, the East Coast Conference is heavily based in New York with seven of the schools in the New York area, one in Connecticut, and then UDC, obviously, in the District of Columbia. What have those bus rides been like? Has that helped your team kind of bond and you know become a little bit tighter with all that travel? Um, the bus rides, they, they, they're they a little tough, you know, especially with the kids getting to classes and, uh, you know, having to study on the bus. Uh, sometimes, you know, we get back two, three o'clock in the morning. But, uh, you know, just to be in a conference, being able to play for a conference championship, the young ladies, they are excited. I think they understand that they got to put, you know, things in priority and understand that the class is first and then you got to take care of business on the road. But I think right now, just being in the conference, they really don't pay a lot of attention to the five, six hours on the road. Right, right. And, uh, you know, what's your mindset now as a coach going into the postseason? Um, you know, trying to keep, I'm sure, your players' legs fresh, trying to keep their mind fresh, trying to keep them aggressive and, and playing sharp. How, how do you approach that as a coach as you go into the postseason here? We just constantly talk about it in practice, just, you know, staying focused, continue to do what we do best. You know, uh, we constantly preach defense, you know, just keeping the chemistry together. Right now, they're playing very well together as a group. And then right now, just as a team, we, we, we're getting it done by committee. So you and, just kind of keep doing what you've been doing all yeah, along. Yeah, try to keep doing it in practice, and we just try to stay consistent in what we've been doing. And last night, uh, you got a big win against Malloy. It also happened to be senior night. How special was that to, to send the seniors off uh, with, with a great win? Uh, I was bittersweet. You know, I was happy to get the win. I was happy to see a lot of the young ladies that uh, you know, work hard in practice to get an opportunity to play some good minutes, you know, especially for Brittany Clement who's been here, she doesn't play a lot, but she works extremely hard. She in knocked practice. down a couple big shots, she knocked too. Down, we know, she does it in, she do it in practice. She can shoot the three, and, you know, and we told her, you get out there, have some fun. Her parents made it to the game, and out the of guys, she's another young lady that gets in, 3.8 student, works hard on the basketball court. She's a good leader on and off the court, and, you know, she got the opportunity to play. And uh, right now, just, you know, those things, Jasmine Rich and Stacey Griffiths, They've been with me for four years, so they, they've been there. They made it to the NCAA, and I think they feel like right now is their time to make it to the NCAA one more time before they leave. Yeah, that was a special night last night, and I think it would uh, even be a lot more special to go to the NCAA tournament, and we can see what happens from there. So, yeah, that'll be great. Uh, Coach, thanks for joining us today in the Coach's Corner, and certainly best of luck in the ECC tournament coming up real soon, and then hopefully uh, beyond into the NCAA tournament as well. Okay. Best of luck right. to you. Thanks, man. Coming up next, uh, when I come back, we'll visit with Jasmine Rich, UDC point guard and senior captain.
Welcome to the Firebird Spotlight. We're now joined by University of the District of Columbia women's basketball senior point guard and captain Jasmine Rich. Jasmine, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Jasmine, you're having a phenomenal season. You're 21 and four, you're ranked in the top 25. How much fun are you having? We're having a lot of fun. Like, um, we haven't had a 20 plus win season since my freshman year. So, you know, we're just having fun. It's good to go out with a bang. Just happy that we're going out. And what's the difference between this year's team and years of the past? Uh, how come you guys are so good? Um, well, we've always been good, but we've had uh, we had our best player, Lillian McGill, where she you know she scored a lot of points and she got a lot of rebounds, but she was the go-to person. Now we have at least five or six or maybe seven go-to people to you know if we put them in the game, they can play their part. And uh, we had Coach Butler on the show earlier. What's it like playing for uh, Jay Butler? Um, he's cool. He. You know, he yells a lot, but he's yelling for a reason, so I understand. He certainly knows what he's talking about, that's yes, for sure. Yes, he does. Uh, you're the point guard. What's your mindset going into every game? Um, we need to win. Every game is, you know, every game could be our last. We need to win every game that we go into. we got to go play hard. Everybody has to play hard in order for us to win. If one person doesn't play hard, we may not. And you're certainly just looking to distribute the ball. I mean, you, you've racked up a ton of assists. <laughs> yes, I've always been a pass-first point guard, so... I'm just looking to get my teammates going. And uh, earlier in the season, you lost Jamila Bonner, who was your leading scorer at the time, one of the leading scorers in the country. How has your team rebounded from that and been so successful, but despite her not being around? At first, it kind of hurt us. You know, we thought that, yeah, since we was our leading scorer, that we might lose a lot, but that just made everyone else play even harder. So now, instead of just going to Trees, now we go. We can go to Danica, we can go to Janelle, we can go to anybody else and have them be a leading scorer for the day. It seems like you have a really deep squad and anybody can score at any given time. Um, do you have high hopes for the postseason? Is that something you and your teammates talk a lot about, the NCAA tournament and the ECC tournament? We talk about it all the time. Like, everyone's just so excited. We're so we're ready to, just ready to go. We, everybody wants to go all the way. And, uh, you know, we talked about Jay Butler and, and the style of play, and, and you like to get a lot of assists. Um, you, full court press a lot and, and create a lot of transition and, and turnovers. Is it fun to play that style? I love playing defense. Like I've always just been a, let me get a steal or let me get someone, like just take it from someone. It's just my way of playing. So I actually like playing full court. I mean, if I get tired, oh well, if we get a steal. And who's your uh, main assist target? Who do you like to feed the ball it to used the most? To be, it used to be Treese before she got hurt, but now I'll feed it to like Stacy or Donna and even Janelle and Lauren and, and our uh, bench player, Jaleesa. Jasmine, thanks very much for joining us. You're welcome. When we come back, we'll visit with UDC head men's basketball coach, Jeff Ruland. We're in the coach's corner and we're joined by University of the District of Columbia head men's basketball coach Jeff Ruin. Coach Ruin, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Matt. Coach, you're 22 and 3. You're ranked in the top 25, number 18 nationally, actually. Uh, tell us about this season so far. Oh, it's been terrific. Uh... I even told the guys in the locker room last night after the game that uh, it's probably the most the team that I'm most proud of. We've come such a long, long way uh, from, from two years ago, and we've done it the right way in the classroom and on the court. And uh, I couldn't be couldn't be prouder. And uh, having a great time, having a great time. It's interesting that you say that when you're winning like this as a coach, do you actually get to enjoy it or do you have to keep that game face on until the season's completely over? Well, you have to be focused, uh, but it, it, you know, it, you still want to show them that you know, when you win, you're, you're happy. You don't want to be an ogre all the time. But uh, there's, there was a time early in the season where I thought 
we lost our focus a little bit when we, we lost those two games. And uh, since that point, we've been really, really focused. And uh, I was a little concerned going into last night, but you know, obviously they uh, they proved me wrong. So uh, I have a lot of confidence in them. I yeah, really, they took they care really of business matured, against yeah. Malloy last night. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, a lot of media attention is put on uh, Nigel Munson, local product from Washington D.C. to Matha High School, and and also Brandon Herbert out of McDonough. You have a third senior guard who's kind of like an unsung hero, in my opinion, on your team, uh, Deshaun Bradshaw. What can you tell us about Deshaun? Deshaun's been been huge. Uh, even though Dyreek is, you know, one of the best defensive players in the league, and he's averaging, he's third in the country in blocks. We put Deshaun on the best perimeter player the whole season long. And he's actually changed games. And then throw in the games where he's good offensively, that's just a bonus. But he's, he's been a, a huge part, and you're right, he deserves a lot more credit. You know, between him and Dyreek, I'd have to do a coin flip for, for player of the year, defensive player of the year. But uh, they're both you know, very, very valuable. We'll talk about Dyreek a little bit more in a minute, but when you talk about Nigel and you talk about Brandon and Deshaun, those three kind of are a core of your team. Did you expect them to gel together as well as they have when you started the season out? Oh, without a doubt. You know, Brandon and Nigel had already played a year, you know, with them, and I knew uh, Sean's game coming in, and uh, he was the missing piece that we were looking for. You know, like I said, a great defensive player and does a lot of little things, but also uh, at one time was actually uh, in high school was considered a better shooter than Brandon. So. And you mentioned uh, Dyreek Jones. Uh, he's third nationally in blocks. So he had 10 blocks in a game not too long ago. He's also in the top 10 in rebounding. Uh, what does he do for you? He's kind of our glue. You know, he cleans up a lot of things uh, in the paint, a lot of mistakes that uh, when the guards make in dribble penetration, he's always there. And he's, he's had that knack since he's been here. And, uh, you know, to, to step up after Kelly went down, he's. He's been huge. Um, you know, I think we're close to top ton field goal percentage defense, and he's a big reason why. Sure. Uh, obviously, as we continue here, we've only got a, one game left in the regular season, but we'd want him to be even more of a threat offensively, you know, because he, he is such a big body. And I think once he realizes that not too many people can stop him down low and the light goes off, it's going to be scary. Coach, shifting gears a little bit, uh, the other day you went to the University of the District of Columbia Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony. It was the inaugural event. What was that like for you being at that event? And head coach Will Jones uh, was inducted in the 1982 National Championship team. Well, I thought it was a special evening. You know, obviously kudos to Pat and Pat Knapp and yourself for putting it on. Uh, it was great. You know, all those people are, are real worthy. Um, I do have a little connection with, 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 with Coach Jones. He did recruit me, and he was like, right. I liked him a lot, and I was not a big lefty fan. So I, I wasn't going to go there. But you know, every day we come in the gym, we look at that banner, and uh, that's what we're shooting for. And that trying is to what put you... something up there. And then people realize you know, they came up you know, the next year, and we're right there to do it again. It's quite amazing. It is, yeah. The, the national championship team in 1982, and they went back to the finals in 1983. Sure and we're the runner-up, uh, a yeah. tremendous story. Now, as we look towards that for you, what does the postseason look like for the Firebirds? Well, we're not looking too far ahead right now. We, we've got a big game Saturday, and uh, you know we've been trying to take these you know, one at a time. Uh, no matter what happens, you know we want to win that game, and we want to win the uh, postseason tournament so we don't leave it in anybody's hands. But uh, I've got to believe what uh, the season we've had here, that worst case scenario, we'll get an at-large bid. Uh, I think we're proving we're one of the top teams in the country. And uh, you have the ECC tournament coming up in a little bit. Uh, is that going to be fun for you, your team to go up to New York and battle in the ECC? Yeah, it's fun because it's, it's uh, you know, uh, it's a tournament where, you know, if, if, if you lose, you're done. So it gives a little bit more edge to it. And I've been at, I've been in that position a number of times when I was at Iona, and I'm undefeated in championship games, so we're hoping we can get to that Sunday game. But like I said, we've got to take care of business on Saturday. And Coach, last night we talked a little bit about the Malloy game. Uh, that was senior night. 
you had five seniors who were, we had a ceremony before the game. Uh, how special was that for the seniors and for you to get a big win like that on senior night? Well, we wanted to, you know, send the guys out the right way. We've been pretty awesome at home other than the CW post game. And I thought uh, a bad, bad couple bad whistles influenced that game too much. But uh, we wanted to send those guys out the right way. And it was a, it was a great affair. And, you know, we played really well offensively in the first half. And we talked at halftime about getting back to the kind of defense we played. And then the next thing I look, we're up. Uh, I look up at the clock, and we're up 37 points. So it was impressive display. You have a pretty special group of seniors. How are you going to replace those guys next no, year? No, that's, that's part of the job. Those things happen. But, uh, you know, recruiting is going uh, well right now. And, uh, you know, still ways to go. But uh, I think we're going to be, instead of, you know, looking to replace, I think we're going to reload. That's great. When you can get your program to that point, uh, that's yeah. a special thing. Uh, Coach, the women's team is in the top 25 as well. You're ranked 18th, they're 23rd. You've both been in the top 25 for a couple weeks in a row now. Uh, you must be very proud of that. Oh, I always try to make it early and, and, and catch catch most of their games. You know, Coach Butler's been great, and uh, I got a lot of respect for him. And you know, uh, let's be honest, I have three daughters, so I'm I'm, I'm fond of the girls, and uh, I got a big fan in Coach Ruling. Well, that's great, Coach. Thanks very much for joining us in the Coach's Corner today. Best of luck to you in the ECC uh, championships and hopefully the postseason NCAA tournament as well. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks Let's for get coming a Mercedes on. sponsorship. What do you say? <laughs> American Service Center. Thanks for watching the Firebird Nation Sports Update. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. The Firebird is rising in the nation's capital, and we're glad you're along for the ride.